Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for some Thor news? Two minutes to midnight. Doomsday clock. Midnight theater. On a Friday. All right, I got to let you know, I have not been handling this May energy well. Okay, we've been talking about Comet Swan, which is impressive. This brought to us by Corey Powell. Um, But it appears it reached its maximum magnitude at 5.1 and is now at 5.5 and it may be breaking up but oh geez do i have a story for you we are talking about comet c2020 f3 neo wise and you gotta love seeing these rather unrealistic comet brightness predictions but i mean come on just imagine what a site would that would be this is tyler durden gray and this is brought to us by Alex Lubers. Hmm, yes, magnitude negative 15. That would be brighter than the full moon. And hey, guess what? It is supposed to peak in the middle of July. Now, that will set off many bells for us because that would be Nostradamus AFRN. Now, the Nostradamus quatrains from the year 1565 have helped me accurately predict what would happen in 2020. And so we're kind of staying with that, although there are some major things in May that have yet to happen. But this comes from July. Hail, rust, rains, and great plagues. To preserve women, because apparently in May, a lot of great women or famous women um, are under siege. They will be the cause of the noise. Death of several plagues, which would help steal famine through hatreds. The sky would will be seen which is to say that it will light up again and so that comet and i'm not saying it's going to get to negative 15 magnitude and be brighter than the full moon but i am saying that this comet c2020 neo wise could accurately fill this last line here all right and so yeah we will be watching and i'm giving you a heads up right now this is july 11th because it comes around the backside and then swings around. Now, it's in no danger of hitting Earth, but it is definitely super duper fascinating. And with everything going on, it's just another 2020 thing that we will be watching. But remember, most comets are totally disappointing at the end, and we have yet to have a major comet that in my lifetime. I'm talking one that really kicks up the stirrups whatever that means and so right now comet c2020 f3 neo eyes is under the the sun and i'll play it for you and so swew somewhere between there it would be super duper bright or that is what they're telling us. So we're just going to have to keep paying attention. But let us not close the book on Comet Swan. Because another outburst for Comet Swan. Question mark. Comet Swan C2020 F8. Man, we're getting a lot of Fs this year. Master. Just finished one naked eye outburst. Another one might be underway. Magnitude estimates from observers in the southern hemisphere suggest that Comet Swan's brightness is rebounding. This development comes as the comet approaches Earth for a 0.56 astronomical unit flyby on May 12th, which is in four days and the day that Saturn goes retrograde and the day before Venus goes retrograde, which is an amazing segue to the transformation of Venus, which is the most fascinating and mysterious planet in our solar system, in my opinion. On June 3rd, Venus will pass almost directly between the Earth and the Sun, an event astronomers call inferior solar conjunction. But between now and then, Venus will turn its night side towards Earth, turning the planet into an increasingly slender crescent. Astrophotographer Raffaello Lina of Rome, Italy, has been monitoring the transformation. Wow, and Venus's junk gets big, apparently. The progression of the crescent as Venus approaches inferior conjunction is clear, says Lina. I took these pictures using a bunch of data that I'm not going to read. You don't need a telescope to see the shape of Venus. That's what she said. 
even ordinary binoculars will show the crescent. Just point your optics at the super bright evening star in the western sky after sunset. The animation created by Larry Cohen of the shadowandsubstance.com shows you where to look. And so, May is definitely going to be exciting. I don't know if it's going to be any fun. Uh, so far, the empathy energy has been no fun whatsoever, at least for me. I don't know how you're doing. Um, and so, you know, who knows who's going to survive 2020? It is definitely like Game of Thrones, where you never know what's going to happen next. Be ready for some surprises. I hope your soul is good and your karma is even better. Or flip those around however you want to. But it's something to pay attention to. And we just had the super full moon, which was Scorpio. And I've never been a fan of Scorpio energy. Because who likes getting stung by scorpions? Nobody. And then they pinch you with their pincers. By the end of May, Venus will become breathtakingly thin crescent, fringed with rainbow colors. By refraction in low twilight atmosphere, the horns of the crescent might actually touch when the Venus sun angle is least on June 3rd. An amazing sight that requires some care to observe. For the next few weeks, Venus will be must-see viewing in the evening sky. So take a look. All right. This has been a Thor News. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Cows. What's scarier than cows, man? Everybody stay cool. And I love you, Asteroid Fight Club.